Hey there everybody, in this video, we're gonna talk about Facebook targeting options. What are the different options that you have and what are the most effective options for your brand or your business? Let's get into today's video. Hey there, my name is Brandon Brashears. I create daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, this is a great place to learn. Be sure to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any questions, comments, or need help with anything, don't hesitate to reach out by commenting below. So let's talk about Facebook targeting. Facebook's ad platform is by far one of the best, in my opinion. You have different interest audiences, you have different demographic audiences, and then you have different engagement audiences. We're gonna be breaking each one of these down when you should be using them, and we'll talk really about some of the best uses. So it doesn't matter if you have a, a local business or an e-commerce business that's trying to sell to people around the world, you're going to be able to identify the right groups of people to be targeting. So let's talk about it. The first thing that I think is most kind of prevalent and under, easy to understand is that you have demographic data. So you can choose men or women or age groups or, you know, specific geographic locations. These are demographics that you can use. Now, if you have a local business, especially if it's very geography based where you have, you know, a specific geographic area where your clients only come from a five mile radius, I would always cast as wide of a net as possible, especially when I'm um, trying to target for specific conversion actions. So if I'm targeting for like a, an opt-in, like a standard conversion, which is complete registration or a lead or these different actions that we can optimize for, it's typically good to give it as much of a, a wide as net of, as possible. So I'll give you an example. When I do marketing for veterinary practices, and I know that most veterinary practices, especially if it's a dense um, area with dense population. It's not the same for a rural area. So if they're out in the country and there's not another veterinary practice for 50 miles, we'll go out a lot further. But if we're trying to target a specific area and there's a good population around there, we'll do a five or 10 mile radius and we'll just put out offers to all of these people. Cause we know that statistically about half people have a dog or a cat. And so just by targeting the relevant radius, we usually get good results with that. Um, we'll also layer in sometimes um, male or female, but typically we just like to cast as wide of a net as possible just because we have, you know, I would say sometimes 100,000 to 200,000 people that we're going to be targeting. And so any more narrow that we get there, especially with the awareness content that we're putting out, it's not as um, beneficial to, to really get granular and target a group of like 5,000 people. Your ad's just not going to get shown enough and you're not going to get results or it will take a long time for that to happen. So that's like a local type business um, example. Now, if you have like a, let's say a sports product and you wanted to start building awareness for some of the content that you're putting out, I think that if you have a very broad offer, you can target, you know, specifically women who are, you know, 27 to 35 or something like that, right? If you're just trying to build out awareness and build out engagement audiences, and test different audiences, that demographic data is very useful. Uh, but Typically, I only use that kind of data when I am really starting out my ad campaigns. And what I mean by that is I have to have some kind of content that we're putting out for awareness, some kind of content that's going to be segmenting and identifying the right group of people so that then I can drive them into my next step of the funnel, which is typically like an opt-in or a low ticket sale or a webinar or something that's relevant to the end offer that we're going to be developing here. So when I have that, we have other types of targeting as well. We have interest-based targeting. So things that they're interested in, activities, um, different topics, we have different pages that we can be targeting. And with this, th that's great data points in there. We used to have so much more data because we had third-party data sources that were providing insight into purchase events. You could ch target people based on what month they bought their homeowner's insurance. Like there was so much good data. Not all of that is there still, but there still is tons of great data. The thing that's amazing about Facebook is it lets you warm up the audience, unlike any other ad platform, in my opinion. That's what makes it great. With Google, it's great that you have targeting and things, but that traffic is so cold. Facebook allows you to use video and content and target people contextually while still getting this, this kind of warmer traffic. So that being said, sending people to blogs or getting people to engage with videos based on interests, based on job titles, based on college, 
things that are relevant to your groups is very, very helpful. So we have that kind of targeting. We have interest-based targeting. We have demographic targeting as far as job titles or industries or things like that. And that's like the next level of layering that you can add on. And typically, we like to use that layering at the middle of funnel or for awareness. So again, pushing people to blog posts or pushing people to content. And then what I really like to do is send people to for specifically bottom of funnel or for webinars at middle of funnel, take people who've engaged with either my website or watched videos or engaged. I like the Facebook any engagement audience. I like the um, Instagram any engagement audience. I like the web traffic engagement audiences and then lookalike audiences for those. So if I'm sending people to webinar, I like to make sure that they've engaged with the piece of content that's segmenting and then target those those people either at middle or bottom of funnel. So I think that if you have a strategy that's built around generating awareness or building out an audience, and then you have a middle of funnel offer that drives people to a bottom of funnel offer, I still find that, that works amazingly well on Facebook. I would love to know what you think though. What are you trying to build out? Where are you trying to grow your traffic? And um, what is it that you're trying to achieve? I would love to know. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments or need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.